similar procedure used with the boards to ease the application of the cove sheeting protecting the corners with some of the boards is often a useful facility and in general the same procedure is followed. Especially in the corner you will see the benefit of the, having the boards to stop the sheeting from sticking to the wall while you are working with the corners. You will notice how carefully the corners are fitted to get a neat, tidy and accurate fit in the corners. Surplus material is then trimmed off by cutting a gusset on the floor thus allowing you to take the cove sheet through the corner without having a join on the vertical part of the corner where the two walls meet. This is extremely beneficial for cleanliness and durability in the long term, always being careful to ensure that you get the material tight into the corner. You will remember that we had a small piece of chamfered co-former or taper end in the corner to support the sheeting where it meets the floor. An alternate to the PC20 would be to use a full length of taper end which could be fitted into the corner with the wide portion chamfered to match the PC20 at the base and the point going up in the corner to ease the fitting of the sheeting. As before, where the corners are done, the joint at the gusset is double cut at 45 degrees. The corner where Charles is working will be well supported by the additional piece of PC20 or taper end. The cove join that meets the floor is then scribed as per normal with the joints at the corners being cut straight in line up with the cove to avoid staggered joints as seen in the common mistakes. This procedure is continued around the room or the area being installed until the floor is complete. Coved mitres in the corners need to be hand grooved with a P-type groover, being careful to use a small steel straight edge to keep the joint straight and not too deep and then would be welded in the normal way. From the video you can see that the groover takes off a tiny strip from each piece of sheeting ensuring that it is correctly and centrally grooved. The weld process is done normally and carefully as it is shown again using the steel scraper or painter's mate to protect the other sheets and weld. A hand groover is used to cut most of the weld, always being careful to do a double cut with a spacer blade in place on the first warm cut.
curved portion, an exacto cutter is used to ensure a neat and smooth trim of the weld. Again, the weld is glazed and smoothed after trimming and if necessary can be sanded very carefully with a shaped sander and 150 grit water paper being careful not to damage too much of the sheeting on either side of the weld. Once sanded the joint needs to be carefully solvent wiped lightly only on the weld and then a light coat of porous or sealer applied with a soft cloth to prevent the weld from getting dirty in the future. The final result is a delicate and cleanly installed corner. All other welds are completed in the conventional manner where vertical and curved welding is being done especially with PUR coated sheeting. A welding tip on the gun with a small wheel can be used to advantage. On the video clip you can see the PUR wheeled weld gadget in action. Again the result is pretty close to perfect.